Hey everybody. How y'all doing? Mike Hines here, Wildlife Outdoor Survival. Well y'all, this video is going to be on uh, Season 5, Episode 3. I guess I kind of messed up y'all. I did a live stream the other day of Episode 3 while it was on air. And I got some footage on camera. Anyway, my video got banned. Didn't get no trouble, no community strikes, no copyright strikes, just... They banned my video. No big deal. I've already removed the video. But, uh, you know, y'all know the deal about the loan show. I'm doing a series on um, Season 5. Like I said, this is Episode 3. Um, episode 3 starts out with Brooke. I think this is mainly the first real footage we've seen of Brooke. We haven't seen a whole lot of Brooke. Um, but uh, she wakes up to wolves howling and still dark. In the early in the morning, I guess, um, she wakes up to wolves howling uh, real close by. But, uh, you know, I think Brooke has a pretty good, real good chance on this show. Um, she has experience with cold environment. I know part-time, at least part-time, she's in Alaska. Um, the reason Brooke says that she left season four was because of the hunger, um, you know, and that can do it, y'all. I mean, hunger is a big big issue that's why you really gotta you know really get out there and hustle and get all the food and stuff you can um but uh as it continues with brooke brooke is building a log shelter um well she's got a tarp for a roof and she's got her front wall made out of logs she's got that all done and uh she is building a fire pit and she takes digs a hole puts down like some sandy gravel gritty bottom in it um lines it with uh, rocks and stuff and um, looks like a good looking fire pit. The way she vented it, the uh, fire pit's inside her shelter. The way she vented it, she just let it vent like where her tarp and her ridge pole meet. She pulled her tarp back and lets it vent in there. I don't know how well that's going to do later on. Myself, my opinion, I would make a draw system for the smoke and actually I have a plan to use the heat if I do get to go on the show in this cold weather. Um, I have a plan to use the heat to uh, kind of help warm my floor of my shelter and uh, won't give up more information than that we'll talk about that later um, but uh, you know we've talked about how important shelter is and uh, that's the way Brooke feels through this she uh, she says I've got notes here y'all she says that uh, her shelter right now is her number one priority um, you know, and she talks about it gives you that feeling of security. And you know, y'all, that's important. When you're out there, you know, you got at least you got somewhere you can go where you feel safe. I mean, even though it may not hold up to, you know, major size predators or something like that, at least you, you feel safe. Um, and you know, it's gonna keep you warmer. Uh, that, that sense of security, especially in a situation where that kind of predators are around and you're out there with nothing, that's a big feeling, that sense of security. I mean, that that's really important in my opinion. Um, you know, and um, that that feeling of security and, and that, it's like a mental confidence boost, um, like a safe zone. And I think that would um, encourage you to go longer through harsher temperatures and, you know, rough environment. I, I think a good shelter will ensure you spend all the time you're there that you can I mean you know um, okay next person it showed on episode 3 was Nicole um, y'all heard me talk about it. I really like Nicole um, have a lot of respect for her. Uh, starts out she's taking a bath in the river and I talk about sweating and stuff so it still must be kind of warmer temperatures there right now it's I don't know if it's late summer or early fall um, it's still evidently warm there in Mongolia right now I've heard, uh, I think, Larry and Nicole talk about the heat and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, which, um, Nicole's also working on a shelter, and she says she wants to build a really, really warm shelter um, because Mongolia is one of the coldest, coldest places in the world, y'all. Um, you know, like we talked about, I think they said 100, it can get down to 60 below, y'all. That means when you walk outside, you're gonna get frostbite. Anything exposed that cold, you will get frostbite. Uh, you know, and we've talked about um, 
Nicole having multiple sclerosis. Y'all know my wife has multiple sclerosis, MS. And uh, one of the things, this is something that really worried me about Nicole. Um, I know the heat, with my wife, the heat um, can cause an MS attack. Well, you know, like we said, it was warm there. She'd been hot. I'm not sure what caused them. I don't think that, you know, anybody knows for sure um, what causes the attacks to come on. I think it could be several different things. But uh, Nicole starts talking, talking about um, she starts feeling tired. Um, she just doesn't feel right. And her arms and legs are getting heavy. Um, the weight of her arms and legs just feels heavy. And um, that's one of the things my wife says that sometimes it feels like she has um, concrete boots on or, you know, concrete blocks to attached to her feet. Um, that's really hard to deal with, y'all. I mean, it just, I mean, it takes a lot out of you. I think this is probably the early symptoms of a MS attack with Nicole. Um, that's what I thought when I saw this episode. Um, in Vancouver, Nicole, you know, we talked about that she treats her MS with, uh, herbs and wild plants and stuff and um in mongolia i mean in uh, vancouver she could find the plants she needed to keep herself treated to keep an ms attack from happening or that's her treatment process well in mongolia um she's not finding the plants she needs and you know when this hits her it, like she talks about on the episode that um these ms attacks comes in waves you know, you might feel fine and be up doing something, you know, today, but tomorrow you may be down for two days in bed with not being able to feel your legs. I mean, you know, uh, but, you know, just like she said, then um, she kind of gets to feeling better. Um, she gets out, starts gathering some stuff, looking for plants and stuff. Um, and then uh, that's when she's talking about it, it comes in waves says she, her plan is to take breaks and um, take lots of naps and she thought she'd be okay well then she's working on a shelter again she gets to feeling bad and y'all her legs just completely give out um, you know that could be dangerous in itself y'all if you uh, in an area where there's predators you leave your camp even at camp but you leave your camp you get out here away from your security and um, your legs give out, you can't get up, you can't run, you can't defend yourself. Uh, that could be a real bad situation. That could be fatal. And, uh, you know, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Uh, Nicole got the hurting so bad and legs wouldn't work and um, they actually had to pack her out. She she tapped, y'all. And uh, they had to pack her out. And uh, I think she ended up, they give her a choice of being airlifted or uh, being able to make it to the truck. And she told them she could not walk. So they. I think they end up airlifting her out, and um, you know, I hate this, y'all. Nicole was probably one of my favorites. Her knowledge and what she does, even though she has this disease, is amazing and deserves, uh, you know, just tremendous respect. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's respect, y'all. I mean, that that's hardcore. That that's driven and doing what you you know love and desire to do anyway. Um, Got to have respect for that, y'all. Uh, all right. Next, we go to Jesse. Okay. I like Jesse, y'all. Um, I think Jesse has a lot of knowledge about hunting and um, gathering, you know, game and harvesting wild game and stuff like that. Um, haven't seen a lot of Jesse doing plants, but, um, you know, it may just be something that we haven't seen the footage of yet. You can't really judge by just what you see on the show. Um, starts out okay jesse is looking for looms um wild onions field garlic stuff like that um now where he's going tall grass where you can't see the ground real good remember y'all pit vipers um there's pit vipers here uh i have to keep checking my notes y'all i don't want them to leave anything out but uh anyway jesse walks up on one y'all and uh um, he ends up shooting it with his bow um, that's when, another reason I would pack my bow with me everywhere I went, not just for the opportunity to harvest something, but also for protection. Um, <laughs> Jack actually makes a good shot, hits the snake, cuts his head off. Um, now when he saw this snake, it was already curled up and the way he talked, it was ready to strike. 
Y'all, we talked about before, you get bit by one of these um, pit vipers, folks, this venom is in Beijing, China. That's a long distance to travel. Venomous, you know, snake venom in your veins. I mean, that's risky, y'all. Um, and I know, you know, y'all thinking when um, Jesse, he cleans and eats this snake. And a lot of people think, well, it's poisonous. Well, the meat's not poisonous, y'all. Um, for snake venom to poison you, it has to be injected through your skin, directly into your bloodstream. Um, you, you're not going to get it from eating the meat. I mean, you, you're not going to get poison from eating the meat. Um, the actual venom bags are in his, in his head. I mean, you know, um, now, only thing about a snake, y'all, not a lot of meat on a snake. I mean, it has to be a really big snake. This was a average size snake, wasn't really real big. Um, a snake is... I think, it said on the show, I think uh, can have up to 500 vertebrae depending on the length of the snake. And each vertebrae has rib bones attached to it. So you're talking about like up to a thousand rib bones, y'all. Um, but it does have some meat on it. It is calories. It is protein. I mean, you know, it, it's worth, I mean, if you're going to take the chance to kill one, honestly, myself, um, in that situation, I would have probably done what Jesse done. The only thing I would have done different is when he's talking to the camera, he pointed at the, he leaned down and pointed at the snake with the, uh, with the arrow before he shot it. Um, I don't agree with that. I would have just shot it and filmed it, and I mean I would have been filming when I shot, but I would have shot it and just filmed what happened. Um, I would not reach down and get close to a venomous snake in in a survival situation, or especially if I was trying to make it long term. Um, you know, that's the only thing I would have done different. I would have killed the snake. I would have cut the head off. I would have skinned it, and I would have cooked it and eat it. I mean, you know, and, uh, but, um, Jesse, it doesn't actually show it on film, but he harvests a, uh, a grouse. Um, grouse is probably about a one-pound bird. Um, now, Jesse took it and roasted it in the Dutch oven. Uh, you know, I mean, to me, Jesse's he's finding food. Um, he's providing for himself. Um, he's working on shelter. I don't. It didn't really go in depth about what kind of shelter, how how you know heavy duty shelter he's got built so far. But uh, Jesse's really feeling good about where he's you know where he's at right now. He feels good about his shelter. He feels good about his food. He's talking about making it 90 days. I mean, I don't know why he said 90 days. If that's just his personal goal, or if it's something that we don't know about the show, but. Um, he, he's wanting to make it 90 days, okay? Look, one thing you gotta be careful for, y'all. Little tick out there. Um, okay, then. Another guy I, I didn't really know about in previous seasons. Um, I mean, I liked him, but I, I don't, I didn't know much about him, but, um, Randy. Randy is actually, I think, a survival instructor, primitive ways living, something like that. Um, it starts off, Randy is building a long cabin shelter. I mean, y'all, it looks like he's got a good start to it, in my opinion. Uh, this is the first time Jesse's ever, he says it's the first time he's ever done it, built a log cabin like this. Um, kind of experiment for him. Um, he's wanting to, he's notching logs, stacking them on top of each other. He's going to chink it. I'm not sure what he's going to use to chink it with. He talked about chinking it. Uh, he's going to put like a, not a flat roof, but a sloping roof, like a just one pitch roof on it. Um, you know, I mean, so far it looks like Randy's got the idea about going on getting your shelter built. This is what I was talking about. One of the things I would do while I had the energy too, I would go on and start and try to, you know, get me a really heavy duty long term shelter built. Something I can be weatherproof and be as warm as I can in. Um, Randy talks about what got him last time was uh, the isolation, being away from his family and friends and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure that's a big issue, y'all. I mean, for for some people, for a lot of people, most people, that's a, I'm sure that's a big issue. Um, I guess you have to weigh out what's driving you to do it and how bad you want to go home and see your family. That's what it comes down to, y'all. How bad you want to win. That's all it comes down to. What you're willing to go through to, to win this, to try to win. Um, okay, Randy's suggestion, I mean, his idea... Um, that was in season two, I think, when Randy got to missing his family and friends and stuff and decided to tap. Um, his, 
his uh, solution this time is he wants to stay occupied. He wants to keep his mind busy, take in as much calories as he can. Um, you know, he knows right now, he talks about he's using a lot of calories uh, building a shelter, but he's liking his shelter. He's liking the way it's progressing, the way it's coming along. Um, Randy says he's hungry, but I really like this. He said that's just part of the game, um, being hungry. That's just part of the game. Now, you're going to be hungry when you're there. Um, you're not going to eat every day. I mean, more than likely, if you eat every day, you're doing an excellent job. Um, Randy is feeling good about um, catching fish. He says he only fishes for 15 minutes a day, and he's averaging about four fish a day. Um, right now, Randy said he's getting connected and finding his rhythm and, um, um, you know, He's eating well, I mean, and that that's a big part of it, y'all, is um, getting to connected to what's around you, you know, figuring out your resources and what you can take and how to harvest them and what's the best time of day to harvest them. You have to really pay attention to what's going on around you. Um, you know, I, I feel good about where Randy's at. If, if Randy stays, if Randy continues to catch food the way he is, the only thing I'd probably do different is I would be preserving some of it for the days that I don't get anything. Because the way I look at it, instead of just eating when you can, if you can try to ensure that you eat it every day or at least as close to every day as you can, your body's going to adapt better and hold up better than it would be going two days, two or three days without eating and then eating and then going another two days without eating. Um, if I was catching four fish a day, two of them I would eat, two of them I would preserve. Um, then the next day, if I or the next couple of days, you know, if I didn't catch fish, I'd have those two preserved fish to get me through, at least have some kind of protein intake, some kind of calories coming into my body, because the whole time you're there, you're burning calories. I mean, they're coming out of you. Um, you know, well then y'all, we go on to Sam. Sam starts out making a fire, talking about how easy it is, the tinder he's found, the materials he's found, how easy it is, you know, to build a fire. Um, one thing that impressed me about Sam, you know, He's the only person I think on this show, on this season, that did not take fishing line and fishing hooks. Well, Sam made the statement that he believes that a big part of this is using all 10 items and using them in various different ways, you know, every way that you can. So Sam is making fish hooks out of his trapping wire. He's taking his paracord, um, breaking it down, taking the, the strands out of the inside and making fishing line with it, okay? Um, pretty good idea if you didn't, I mean, it's hard to say, y'all. I mean, that kind of call, I, I think I would have took some fishing line and hooks, but, hey, Sam's got, he's got fishing line and hooks made now. Um, now on season one, Sam was there, remember this, Sam was there 55 days. 55 days, he caught two fish. What I remember about season one, Sam survived mainly on mice, rodents. That's mainly what he eat that I remember him eating. Um, okay, Sam is trying to break his record of catching those two fish in 55 days to catch more fish. But uh, so far y'all, no fish. So Sam decides he makes a call, um, maybe not a bad call if you're not catching fish. If I wasn't catching fish that way, I'd make me some kind of net y'all or I would have took a gill net or something and if I wasn't catching fish with a hook and line, I would set up nets because you think about most of your primitive tribes and people that actually live off the land and harvest from rivers, they net fish. Um, I mean, you know, plus it could increase your quality of catch per day. Um, as far as preserving food, you know, it, it could increase your quality and your um, quantity of what you can preserve. Um, okay. But Sam decides he's going to go make traps, um, set up a uh, figure four I think he's using. Uh, I think it's Paiute, maybe deadfall traps. He's using deadfall traps, stuff like that. Um, he sets up several of them, he says. Um, you know, and Sam is talking about he's had zero protein in eight days. Eight days, no protein, no intake. Um, he, he's admitting he needs protein. He says... This is discouraging to him not to have protein intake and anything to put in his body, no food, anything to eat. 
Um, sure it is, y'all. I mean, it's very discouraging. When you're out there and you're trying hard as you can to catch something and you can't, it's just like in life, you know. When you try and try and try and you end up failing or not completing what you wanted to do, it's discouraging. That's human nature. I mean, but that's where you got to be mentally strong and try to push through that discouragement and, and, you know, don't let it get you down. I mean, just use that to try harder and set more traps and maybe, like, instead of using the fishing line and hook, make a net. Try to catch some fish with the net. I mean, I, my my way of thinking that river fishing, I think you'd have more chances of catching fish with a net. But now there are people on the show that are catching, you know, three, four, five fish a day. Like I said before, if I was catching that many fish, half of them I would preserve, half of them I would eat. That's just my, but my opinion only, y'all. I don't. I'm not saying anybody's right or wrong. I don't do that, y'all know. I just give my opinion. Um, Okay, well, Sam's got these traps out. He goes checking his traps. I'm not sure exactly what day it is, but he goes checking his traps. Um, he finds one trip, kind of really anxious about it, goes over there, and he catches a little bird, y'all. I think this bird is, uh, what is the name of it? A red start, or, yeah, I think that's the name of it. A red start is the name of this little bird. Um, it's an Asian bird, I think, and, uh, the average weight of these birds, live weight, one ounce. Very, very small bird, y'all. But anyway, hey, any protein is better than nothing. Um, Sam, he catches it, um, he cleans it. One thing I want to point out, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that much about cleaning poultry. Um, you can skin them um, or you can pluck them. Well, if you pluck, a bird, leaves the skin on, it leaves the fat content. Um, I mean, you're looking at, I think it's a 30% increase of your of your calories that you get from eating this if you leave, if you pluck it and leave the skin on. Um, boil it down, actually Sam boiled it down and made a gravy out of it or I, like, like a rouge or gravy, uh, almost like a thick stew. And he said it was good. Um, you know, and, you know, Sam was, like I said, he was talking about being discouraged, but after he ate that, that one meal, he's talking about um, how he's feeling positive now and how he's in it for the long haul. And, you know, uh, you know, y'all, like I said, I got notes. I'm checking my notes here. I don't want to miss anything, leave anything out. I'm trying to keep this within about a 20-some minute video. I think I'm at 23 minutes. I'm going to make it quick, y'all. Uh, I think it's day nine. Nicole had the tap, y'all. Like I said, they airlifted her out. Seven people left. Okay. My outlook on being there on day nine, going on two weeks, ten days, whatever. Uh, by this point, like I said, I would be focusing, depending on what time of year it is, um, like I said, I'm not sure it's pretty secretive about what time of year it is and stuff, but I know it's still warm weather there But y'all I got a feeling in Mongolia when it turns cold. It's gonna turn cold It's not gonna be a long drawed out fall and all that. I think it's gonna get cold pretty quick uh, But by this time I would definitely be working on my shelter if not trying to have it close to being completed I would have some kind of indoor, I mean indoor fireplace with a uh, chimney or draw system to remove the smoke but still let the heat stay in my shelter to warm me um, you need to be by this time you need to be figuring out where your main food source is coming from if your main food source is going to be the river if it's going to be small game or if you're going to be large game hunting and um, you need to start trying to harvest that and prepare to you know store and save and preserve food for what's coming because y'all i'm telling you i got a feeling i know i keep saying this but i got a feeling winter is going to be the worst winter you've known if you i mean other than if you're in mongolia i mean i don't i can't even imagine how bad it's going to get it could get fierce i mean you know and uh, my whole thing is preparing you know in a survival situation we've talked about this before in a survival situation you need to try to remove yourself from the situation as quick as possible, whether it's um, getting yourself out or being rescued or, you know, 
working your way toward a major road or a railroad track or you know that's the whole perspective of a survival situation is getting out of that situation removing yourself from the situation um, this is a long-term thing y'all you gotta look at it different you gotta prepare I mean you know like I said if I go I'm looking at this like I'm going here for a year y'all I'm gonna stay or whatever the time limit might be I'm, I'm here to stay the full year if I get to go if you know if there's any way in my power I can make that happen um, but you gotta look ahead and prepare just like we do in life and you know saving money and I mean out there money don't mean nothing y'all you know but you know how at home you got to save up money to buy this or you save you got to make sure your bills come out first it you got to have your same priorities out in this kind of situation you got to keep yourself warm you got to keep yourself sheltered from the other ones you got to um, keep yourself hydrated you got to keep yourself fed you got to keep yourself healthy you got to keep yourself clean um, there's a whole lot to look at when it comes to a long-term situation y'all um, I mean it, it it's a big difference in just surviving okay um, let's see where I got kind of sidetracked sorry y'all <laughs> um, okay by this time um, you know I was talking about earlier paying attention to your surroundings and what I mean by that y'all is you know as season change different plants do different things there are certain time to harvest everything um, there are certain times that they're better for you and you get protein from it. There are certain times that you can't eat certain things. Um, you know, you really have to pay attention to, like, the seasonal change and the, you know, foliage and plants and trees and, you know, stuff like that. And, like, even the um, wildlife. I mean, you know, harvesting wildlife, okay? Here's my take on that, and I'll, I'll cut it short. Uh, anywhere you go, even if you don't know the wildlife that's there, Again, my outlook only, my take only, my opinion. If you observe and spend time in the outdoors, observe the wildlife, you watch, you figure out their pattern, you figure out where they're bedding at, where their sleeping area is, um, where they're going to get food and water and which direction and are they traveling, to, you know, what path are they taking to get to these things. That's how you harvest wild game, y'all. You gotta be out there with it. You gotta figure it out. You gotta see it. You gotta know their pattern, their routine. They're just like us. They got an everyday routine, y'all. Um, they got the same priorities we do in the wild. You gotta have food, you gotta have shelter, you gotta have water. I mean, you know, that, that same thing. Animals are the same way. Um, small game, even small game, there is a routine to it. Um, every wild animal has a routine and you have to get out there and figure that out. That's how you harvest game. You go out there, you, you get their pattern down, you figure up where they're going and set up in between ambush. I mean, that's the way to harvest wild game. Um, a lot of these animals, you're not going to stalk up on them and just, you know, shoot them. You're going to have to go out there and find where they're traveling, find where they're at, what they're eating, what they're doing, why they're doing it, and set up somewhere in that routine where you think is the best place for you to catch them and try to harvest that animal. Like I said, y'all, just my takes on everything, but that's the way I feel about it. Um, I just want to tell all y'all, I re really appreciate you watching. Um, the support you guys are giving me is great. I'm going to continue on with this, and, you know, like I said, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm going to get picked for season six, but, y'all, that just means by next year, season seven, when I put in, I'll be more prepared then than I am now. Um, love each and every one of y'all. Appreciate you watching. If you would, please like and subscribe to our videos and channel, and I'll see y'all next time.